In this video, I'm going to talk about effects you can do in jQuery. We just have a few elements on the page. I have an image, an h1 tag, and then a paragraph that you can see on the page there. And I'm going to first talk about the height event. So we'll just type in the jQuery selector, and then we're just going to do a dot .hide, and that's it. So if I run this code with just the image.hide, it's going to hide the image. The image just disappears. You can see now it's like that image isn't even in the code there. And if you need help adding jQuery to your website, you can check out my first video on jQuery where I show you how to add jQuery. After you hide an element, you can show the element. So I just have to select it again and then just do dot show. And now you're barely even going to be able to tell anything because it's going to hide it and then show it right away. So hide and show just hides and show instantly, but you can use animation in a couple of ways. So, so you can pass in arguments to hide and show so it won't do it instantly. I can pass in slow to make it a slow effect or fast to make it a fast effect. You can also use normal. So let's see what that looks like. See it disappeared slowly and then it came back quickly. So instead of putting words slow and fast, you can also put the number of milliseconds. So I'm going to put 500 milliseconds to hide it. That's a half a second. And then 1,500 milliseconds to show it, 1.5 seconds. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so you can really do any speed you want by just passing in a number like that. And let's just see what that looks like if I do it on the H1 tag. So here I'm going to change this to H1. And let's try that. So you can see it looks actually kind of different on the H1. So the show and hide effect use a combination of slide and fade effects. With the, the slide effect, it's actually just changing the height really quickly. So it's lowering the height into zero. And with an image, when you lower the height, it also automatically changes the, changes the width. But with an H1, when you change the height, it does not automatically change the width. So that's why the H1 looked like it was um, just coming straight down and up, and then the image looked like it was going into a little corner. So show and hide use slide and fade at the same time, but you can also use one or the other. So instead of hide or show, I'm going to use slide up, or I can use slide down. So now it's not going to change the opacity at all. It's just going to slide up and down, and you can still use the slow, normal, or fast or you can use specific number of milliseconds with this. So let's see what that looks like. And so it just slides up and down. Or you can use the fade out and fade in. Fade out and fade in. And you can do a combination of the milliseconds and also I'm just gonna put normal here for the amount of time. So see, it didn't slide at all, it just changed the opacity. Another thing you can do is the toggle. A toggle is just going to change the display based on the current visibility state. So if it's currently hidden, it will show the content. If it's currently shown, it will hide the content. So I'm gonna put toggle, and this time I'm not gonna pass in anything. So if I toggle it, it's just gonna, you can see really quick it went off, and then came back on. It came back on because of the fade in. So it, toggle is just going to make it disappear if it's already appeared. But you can also pass in speeds here. So I'm going to pass in some milliseconds. I'll put 700 milliseconds. Let's see what happens now. So it's going to hide and then fade in. Hide. So it's kind of weird that it's going up and then it, when you fade in it starts at full height and then the opacity goes to 100%. But I can also put toggle here. Using toggle here is just like putting hide or show, but it just does the opposite of whatever state it's currently in. You can also do um, slide toggle or fade toggle. So if it's slid down, it will slide up. If it's slid up, it will slide down. Or fade toggle. If it's disappeared, it will reappear. If it is reappeared, it will disappear. Okay, now I wanna talk about doing something after an animation completes. So if we hide this element, and then we're gonna do a fade in. So we're gonna fade in for a thousand milliseconds. So 
nothing fancy here, it's just gonna fade in just like that. And now we're gonna do a method chaining. So if you do method chaining, you can put in a lot of methods at the same time. So I'm gonna add a class, blue. Now I'm gonna quickly go up into the CSS here, and for a class blue, I'm gonna change the background to blue. And you will see it's gonna fade in, and it's gonna add the class blue. So let's see what happens here. And actually, to make this more apparent, I'm going to change the amount of time to 2,000 milliseconds. So you can see, even though the fade in comes before the add class, they basically happen at the same time. So this starts the fade in and then it adds the class right away before the fade in is even done. If you want to defer an action until after an animation has run to completion, you need to use an animation callback function. So you can put a callback function as the second argument past any of the animation methods. Let me give you an example. After the milliseconds, I'm going to put a comma, and now I'm going to put in the, the callback function. Let's see. Okay, so now um, we have this selector as this, and this is just going to apply to what we're doing the animation on, which is the H1. And now we're going to add the class blue. So let's see what happens now. I'm going to run that, so it fades in, and then the background turns blue. Now one thing you can do is stop an animation. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to attach a click event to the image, the free code camp image, and then in the function, we're going to stop the animations. We select the image tags, and then on click, we're going to run this function where we select the H1 tag and do dot stop. It's going to stop the animation happening on the image. So I'm going to run this, and while it's fading in, I'm going to press the image. I just click the image, and you can see it's slightly faded right now, and it never added the class of blue. So if I run this again, you can see the full animation. Run it again, and I'm going to click the image, and it stops the, Im the animation before it finishes, It does not, and it never gets the callback function, so it never adds the class of blue. The last thing I'm going to show in this video is the delay method. So if you use delay, it's going to introduce a delay between animations. So let me show you an example of that. So look at the paragraph at the bottom. I know there's some other animations happening, but when I run and get this again, it's going to hide the paragraph for a half second, and then it's going to delay for full seconds, and then it's going to show for a 0.3 seconds. So those are the basics of JavaScript effects. You can also do a few more custom effects with the dot animate method. Well, thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.